Hey, we'll just start this one. One of the world's scariest animals just got a whole lot scarier. And Planet of the Apes is slowly becoming non-fiction. Because apparently chimpanzees are out here murking gorillas. Scientists in 2021 witnessed a troop of chimpanzees basically jumping a family of gorillas. And when I say gang, we're talking about almost 30 chimps pressing a family of five. Keep in mind a silverback can weigh up to 400 pounds and could probably bench press your car. It has the broad shoulders of a linebacker. And according to witnesses, the silverback was eating chimps left and right like they were paper mache. But eventually the chimps overwhelmed the bigger silverback and even kidnapped a baby gorilla. I'm not going to tell you exactly what they did, but that family of five became a party of four. And it wasn't even the last time, because later that year, scientists watched the same group of chimpanzees do the same exact thing. Square up with a family of gorillas, kidnapped a baby, and erase its name from the gorilla's census. And it's not like we didn't know chimps were about that. They often hunt bush babies and vervet monkeys, and we've even seen them use weapons like spears to do it. That looks like some early hominid behavior. But it's one thing to hunt something that weighs like five skittles. Going gorillas is another tier of Black Air Force activity. Which is why I'd rather be locked in a room with a jaguar than a chimp. Because at least a jaguar gonna make it quick. That's exactly right, chimpanzees have been known to hunt using spears and the way they do it is not pretty. So what you gotta remember is these sociopaths share about 98% of their DNA with us and they have more in common with humans than just thumbs. They're part of the special class of animals that can create and use tools and chimps are probably the best at it. They'll take twigs, stick them in mounds, and literally go fishing for termites. They'll use stones as hammers to crack open nuts and it's actually a lot harder than it looks. They'll use leaves as sponges to drink water, sticks to steal honey from bees. Some have even been seen making and using stone flakes, which are really close wow. to what early humans used to make back in the day. But yeah, chimps also use spears by breaking off a stick, sharpening one end with their teeth, and then shoving it into the hollow part of a tree trunk. Cause they know that's where bush babies sleep. Scientists watched them stab bush babies and force them out of their hiding spot in trees, where they proceeded to tear them apart and eat them alive. So they don't actually yeet the spear the way a lot of people probably thought, but they're definitely too smart for everyone else's good. Also, fun fact, out of all the animals I've talked about, a chimp was probably the closest to ending my entire way of life. But that's a story for another video. Alright, so here's a story of how a chimpanzee nearly ended my entire way of life. Okay. So this was in Senegal, that little country right there. I was visiting for a couple months, and me and some family decided to go to a zoo that, looking back, was way too run down to be called an actual zoo. The only thing separating the chimps from the general public were prison bars that were wide enough to stick your hand through. And before you even think it, no, I did not stick my hand into the chimp cage. I was seven, but I wasn't stupid. Now, if you wanted to see stupid, you'd have to look at the people around us. But some of them thought it'd be funny to throw things inside the chimp enclosure. Not to like hurt it, but I guess Why? to scare it. Either way, nobody in that zoo was winning an award. Especially when someone started tossing rocks in there. Unnecessary. Yeah, let the stupidity marinate. I just remember watching the chimpanzee just sit there and take it. Until the people ran out of rocks. It wasn't until the chimpanzee started picking the rocks up that the people realized just what they did. They just gave an animal with thumbs and no regard for anything human ammo. Mm. So yeah, as you'd expect, the chimp started fastballing the stones back at the crowd and all we could do was run and take cover. And I vividly remember crouching behind a bench and when I got up, a rock flew past not more than four inches past my right eye. I was really just bad luck away from either doing this video with a glass eye or not doing this video at all. Look, you can say size matters all you want, but four inches made a difference that day. This <laughs> Do you guys remember Harambe when that little boy jumped into the gorilla enclosure at a zoo and he fell into the water, the gorilla started ragdolling him. They couldn't tranquilize him. I think the tranquilizer was going to take too long or it was too risky, so they ended up shooting him in the head. And then that sparked a societal debate in its time over what the correct thing to do was. And I get both sides, but the kid was four, so... And personally, I don't like zoos as a concept, mostly because I think I've been to only two zoos in my life, but I didn't walk out of there thinking, wow, these animals are so happy. Both times I felt sad looking at the animals, but I get it. They educate people at zoos. Sometimes they protect endangered species, although Harambe was an endangered species. So yeah, the gorilla acted like a gorilla. I don't know what else to say about that one. That is why adult supervision is always key, though. Could it have been avoided? Maybe. Leave your thoughts on Harambe down below. The picture might look cute, but it's actually one of the most disturbing things you'll ever see. I'm about to tell you one of the most messed up stories you've never heard of. So this guy, Dr. Kellogg, had the question I'm sure all of us have had at least once. What would happen if you raised a human without teaching it a language or having it around any other humans? Like a nature versus nurture kind of thing. It's one thing to think it, it's another to be on CPS's watch list. So this guy had a human son, Donald, that he raised with a female chimpanzee he adopted named Gua. So he treated 10-month-old Donald and 7-month-old Gua the same in ways that would have had CPS, PETA, and the Geneva Convention pulling up. Uh, 
CPS, PETA, and the Geneva Convention. I can't sleep on that one. Uh. Also, when I think about running experiments with kids, well, I guess with kids is operative, not on kids. I think of, what's that thing kids love? What if we put baking soda and vinegar in a water bottle? Will the chemical reaction make a balloon inflate? Not, what if I treat you like a chimp? Donald is likely to have some residual trauma there. Poor kid. Experiment was weird. He would tap on both of their heads with a spoon just to hear the differences in the sound of their skulls. He would purposely make loud noises and provoke them just to see who would react first. At one point, he even spun Donald around on a high chair until he started crying. It got really dark really fast. It was already Especially dark. when the human Donald started acting like his surrogate chimp sister, walking on all fours, being overly aggressive, and even biting people. It's a shame the Pikachu meme didn't exist back then. Donald would bark like Guau when he wanted food and refuse to walk on two feet even though he could. Eventually, the man who somehow graduated with a doctorate in psychology from Columbia realized that he was ruining his son. So he called the experiment off. The chimpanzee that they treated like a daughter and was part of their family, yeah, they packed her up and sent her away to be part of another experiment. Aww. Where she was unalive by pneumonia a few months later. As for Donald, he grew to be an adult and eventually became a doctor. Oh, okay. Until he deleted himself at the age of 42. And to add insult to whatever seasoned hell this was supposed to be, if you go over to Dr. Kellogg's Wikipedia, he was described as a guy who had no tolerance for those who were unethical. Mm. Moral of this video, Thanos should start a GoFundMe. I'm starting to think he was onto something. Some stories just make you want to go off the grid and avoid humanity completely. And while that may not be an option for you with NordVPN, your internet can. Yeah, not, not my best transition. I'll be better. NordVPN creates encrypted oh. tunnels for your data and protects your identity <laughs> by hiding your IP address. Like I a snow leopard a in the mountains, sometimes. you can observe the world without having to worry about being tracked yourself. I'm not going to tell you where he is. If you haven't seen him I by now, just it. know you've already died twice. NordVPN allows you to connect to thousands of different servers if you want to watch Spongebob on Netflix but can't Do you guys remember that story? I keep saying, do you remember? Like we watch the same stuff, but sometimes I think we do. Of the little girl in Ukraine who was abandoned by her family and she was raised by a pack of wild dogs. And when they found her, she was walking on all fours and she didn't speak human language. She was communicating with the dogs. That was in a documentary. I'm gonna have to find it for you. I don't know what became of her. I don't know how that ends. So to protect your data and get the most out of your streaming service, make sure you go to nordvpn.com slash casualgeographic to score a huge discount available only for a limited time. And with Nord's money back guarantee, it's basically risk free. You want to know what's not risk free? Having a chimpanzee as a pet. Oh, trust me, this is going somewhere. After this ad though. Okay. Here's why you should never give a chimpanzee Xanax. Sounds like common sense, but apparently this. it's not that common. Travis was a 13-year-old, 200-pound walking life lesson that lived with his owners in Stanford, Connecticut. He spent his entire life around people and was basically treated as one of them. He would do things like use the family computer, watch baseball on TV, he knew how to open doors with keys, and sometimes he'd drink wine out of a glass after a long day. Everyone knew him, and he would even greet police officers whenever he would see them around in the neighborhood. I want you to remember that for later. Travis even drove a car, and he did it more than once. It's like if this dude was an actual member of society. Nope. Now what would happen in 2009 wasn't out of nowhere, the red flags were there. He once climbed out of his owner's car and held up traffic for hours looking for a man that threw an empty bottle at the car. And there was one incident where Travis bit a woman's hand and tried to drag her into a car. But none of that was as bad as 09. I'm not gonna make any jokes because this was honestly one of the most traumatizing things I've ever seen. Because one day in 2009, Travis left the house with his owner's keys and the owner and her friend Sharla Nash tried to get him back. The only problem was Nash used his Tickle Me Elmo to try to bribe him back into the house. And seeing someone else hold his Elmo pissed Travis all the way off. Travis brutally mauled Nash, tearing out her face and limbs and not even stopping when his owner hit him over the head with a shovel. And as the attack got worse, his owner had no choice but to literally stab him in the back. And a literal butcher knife to the back only made Travis angrier. Eventually police were called, yeah the same police from earlier. It took multiple bullets just to get Travis to stand down. Travis limped back to the house, went to his cage, and passed away. The victim survived the attack, but Travis had ripped over 90% of her face off, like lips, eyes, nose, they were all gone. Yeah. And I am telling you right now, do not Google that if you have a weak stomach. Those pictures personally f***ed me up for days when I first saw it. At the time, we didn't really know what set Travis off. Some sources said it was because Charlotte Nash was holding his Elmo. Others say it was because Nash had a different hairstyle that day, and that freaked him out. But a toxicology report confirmed that Travis the chimpanzee had Xanax laced tea the day of the attack. Travis's owner obviously got sued, but then she died of an aneurysm just a year later. Oh, I didn't know that part. I didn't know she died after. The amount of documentaries and videos that you can find on the Travis story 
there are a lot of them on YouTube, so I will link you one. But I've seen it speculated that Travis and his female owner had an unconventional relationship that he would get possessive over her and jealous when she was out with other people. So who knows what really happened there? I've seen interviews with the woman who had her face ripped off and she handled it with grace. Or at least better than I would. Yeah, it's a wild story. It was just bad for everyone involved. But at the end of the day, the lesson here is the chimpanzee never went crazy. The chimp just went chimp. This man was attacked by an animal with a name that might just get me canceled. This is the work of Trombiculidae. But they're also known as guidelines you better not homie, chiggers. A word that sounds like it has the potential to offend multiple ethnicities. Not to be confused with a species of parasitic flea known as jiggers. And honestly, I don't know what sounds worse. Chiggers, or chiggas, which is apparently less offensive, is a type of mite found all throughout the world, but the most infamous ones are found in the southeastern US, Midwest, and Mexico. I low-key forgot the warning, so if you don't like bugs, this might not be the video for you. Cause chiggas don't really bite, they'll actually just burrow themselves into your skin, make a little hole, and then spit out enzymes that break down skin cells. Which is exactly where the swelling and irritation comes from. The worst part is, you usually don't start itching until after the larvae falls off you. It's like you're not allowed to suffer until they're done with you. It looks like a strawberry. And once they are, they fall to the ground where they end up becoming their harmless adult forms. And normally the bumps they leave heal on their own. Also the chiggas in North America usually don't carry disease, they're just really annoying to be around. But yeah. I can't tell you who named them, but I can tell you they did not have a good home life. And I feel like someone owes me reparations for making me say it. So somebody sent me this, and I actually think there's a right answer here, but first, I'm actually curious. Which one would you choose? Like, which one do you think you'd have the best shot with? It says, in order to receive $37 million, you have to survive 37 minutes in a one-bedroom apartment, no windows or doors, with one of these guys. We've got a jaguar, Komodo dragon, rhino, gorilla. After what we just learned, if I think I'm going to survive, I'll pick the gorilla. But if I want to die quick, I'll pick the jaguar. Yeah, leave your thoughts. Off rip, we can go ahead and eliminate the rhino for a couple reasons. Rhinos have really bad eyesight and even worse anxiety, mostly because they have to share a zip code with animals that would literally eat them balls first. Life is multiple choice and rhinos consistently choose battery. So if this anxiety riddled warhorse has a panic attack near you, you will be a chalk outline. The Komodo's an instant game over too. Cause Komodos don't flatline their prey with bacteria the way we thought they did. This homicide gecko is actually venomous. And they've been known to dig out human graves and eat the corpses. So don't think you can't get meal prep too. One bite and it's credits. And there's nowhere in the apartment you can go where this 10 foot leather assault weapon can't get to you. Now the Jaguar is actually an interesting one. Jaguar attacks on people are really rare. They're usually in self defense. So you'd actually okay. have a better chance of surviving in a room with a Jaguar as long as you don't provoke it or do anything to make him think you're food. However, Jags are solitary, and in a one-bedroom apartment, if that jaguar feels like you're in its space, it could be lights out. Which is why your best shot is actually with the gorilla. They're natural pacifists that won't waste the calories attacking something that they don't view as an immediate threat to them. So as long as you don't look him in the eye, or smile at him unless you're trying to be Harambe's roommate, your best chance <laughs> at winning and, you know, living oh, is with the gorilla. I want to show y'all something. So I made a video on this, and a lot of people are commenting how they choose the Komodo, since all they'd have to do is climb a couch or just wait there for 37 minutes. Some even said they can manhandle the leather assault weapon if they needed to. Mm. I'm not going to talk about how Komodos can be nearly 10 feet long. I'm not going to mention the fact that young Komodos can climb trees. And I'm certainly not going to acknowledge the fact that out of all the animals here, Komodos are the only ones that will actively eat humans. Nah, I'm not going to talk about any of that. Instead, I'm going to show you this. Did they breed them to do that? Like cockfighting? Oh, wow. No further comment. Took his back, too. Okay. This was another subscriber request from the Casual Geographic channel. So thank you, Carlos, for that. The video is called The Terrifying Truth About Chimps. And Casual Geographic is quickly becoming my favorite animal information channel. So I'll make sure to link it down in the bio for you. You can check out any other videos he has. Maybe some will interest you. I also got some requests to watch another animal channel. I think it was called Z Frank, but the requests were only to watch the channel, not a specific video. So if you can think of a video that you like from there, let me know the title just for the future. Personally, after watching this whole thing, I don't feel any which way about chimps. You know what species of monkey I do think about sometimes are spider monkeys. Once I was in Nicaragua and I saw the spider monkey come up to a man, pretty much squared up to him and threatened his life over a backpack, just unprovoked. 
and something about their lanky bodies and legs I find threatening. <laughs> but as a general rule with wild animals, that seems to be working for me so far is just to mind my own business. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm not trying to get close to them. I don't want a picture. None of that. But that's just me. So anyway, for a literary recommendation, I don't have one that has anything to do with chimps, animals. If you have any that you can think of, make sure to link it down below. Or excuse me, write the title down below. And oh, he mentioned a video. What did he say in the beginning? Something is becoming nonfiction. Planet of the Apes. I haven't seen that. I'm not sure if it's based off of a book, but it might be. And if you like apes, that could be one for you. In my mind, I have a documentary, though, called The Wolf Pack, which isn't about wolves. But with the whole Donald experiment thing, it just popped up. Speaking of parenting and questionable choices, it's about this family of nine, but it focuses on six sons who are forced to live and stay living in their one bedroom or two bedroom apartment. Let's just say apartment in the Lower East Side of New York City. Their dad doesn't let them out and he kind of poisoned their mind to be afraid of the outside world. So the only life that they know is within the confines of their own home. And as a form of escapism, as they get older, they start falling in love with movies and they act out these movies. It's really interesting, but I guess for me, it answers a question or it attempts to answer a question because it kind of ends in a, well, you'll see. But what happens if you take away someone's autonomy and you poison them to be afraid of something because you are? If you've ever seen Wolfpack, let me know what you thought about it. I'm not sure what platform I saw that on. I don't think it was Netflix, but I will look up where they you can stream that movie and I'll make sure to add that information into the description. Other than that, that's all I've got. So leave your thoughts on any of it. And thank you for watching with me.